Okay, so um, I just ended up refreshing uh, the page and then uh, some of the export TTS went away. Uh, this seems to be the right one. And I said export. And uh, we're here. So episode tracks just has a single track, right? We're not allowed to see it here, but it, it just has a single track, right? It's the thing that I showed in the UI before. I can't scroll right now. Um, and then cut sequence is essentially the whole streams videos, which again, I'm not allowed to see here. Maybe, maybe here. That sequence. There we go. Start and hey, Death Row. Good morning. <laughs> so basically, it's an array of start and ends that say how long the videos are. When do they start? When do they end? So I think this is in seconds. So 1204 seconds is the first. For whatever reason, OBS in my local recording, oh, I refreshed for some reason. Uh, and I don't have a breakpoint. That's okay, now it's back. Okay, let's try it. Okay, good. That was weird. Okay, so, uh, for some reason, when we, when we get down to here, Things are wrong. So let's step through th step through this. Let's step over, step over. So media start. So for the episode that this is trying to generate, right? Because this is like from a four hour stream from like two months ago. This is trying to cut um, towards the end. Like a, a fourth episode, a fourth like hour-ish long piece of video, um, which because the local recordings are 20 minutes long, it's taking, um, you know, it has to pull together multiple files, right? And that's, that's uh, what makes this more complicated. <laughs> so media start, it's identified that it needs to grab the ninth clip, right? So the ninth media file, or really the 10th from zero uh, and then it knows that it needs to start taking the video from 321 seconds in yeah yeah that's right right because the, the episode isn't going to necessarily start where it doesn't align with because these are just 20 minute segments so the the start of the file doesn't necessarily necessarily correspond with when the episode is going to start right so it's saying we're going to start 321 seconds into this clip and we're going to take 878.02 seconds from the clip for the first one and the media ends aha duration zero time zero so that's wrong that's definitely wrong so what is cut done end here okay so find media clip cursor end is, is not working right. Okay, I don't have an error logged about that. I probably should. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this go and cancel. Uh, so I'm gonna just debug again. And we're gonna step over this one and we're gonna step into this one. Step in and to find media cursor in. So what does this do? Right, so we have a set of clips, an array of clips. So these are like the media files from the stream. And we have a time. What does that time represent here? Cut.end. So the start is 11,125 seconds and the end is 14,914 seconds. Uh, and which is good, this number is bigger than this number. Unlike other places, this is not a start and a duration. These are like two points in time. 
And so, our objective here for fi finding a clip uh, is to find a clip that ends at, so, so I guess technically exclusive to that point in time. So to do that, ooh, I think, well, let's see. So if I step over this find, do we find a clip? We do. So this clip starts at 14404 and ends at 14914. And what time is the time? Okay. Why why is the duration that this is wrong? This is like so wrong. How could this ever be right? Huh. And it's not even like, oh, it's it's backwards. Like it, it can't be time dot uh, time minus clip dot end either. Isn't isn't it just clip dot end minus clip dot start? Like the whole duration. That's true unless. Right, if time is less than clip.end, then ah, I think I see, I think I see. So what we need to do is we need to take the smaller Do we need to take the smaller of the clip end and the time? I mean, time is time should never be larger than clip that end because otherwise we should not have found that clip. We would have found a different clip. And then we subtract clip that start to get the duration. Uh, so we we export this this function. I guess I wonder if we have a unit test. Uh, F. Oh, not here. Control Shift F. B. Aha! Right. Okay. Duration zero. Find media clip cursor in in media clips 300. Why would the duration be zero? So the, the test is wrong? The duration should be the duration of like if we pass 300, then it should be 100. It should be the duration, right? Um, we also don't have a test here where we are checking the time. Like all of these time would be zero. I'm unhappy with this <laughs> with this metaphor that I'm using for like a, a end cursor, but it also has like details about the contents of the media. Like it's it's mixing two different things and it, it doesn't it's not good. But for the purposes of making this work, I'm pretty sure this should be like this. And this is gonna fail, right? It should fail. All right, and then we 
fix it. Could do that. I don't know why you need to. Um, you don't need to subtract twice. You do that, and then the test should pass. So now, if I remove my breakpoints and we export this OTIO file, save it. Well, actually, let me, I mean, we should have hot, up, up, uh, hot updated according to this, but I'm just gonna do a, a hard refresh. Export, save as test file. Do it. And then back to DaVinci Resolve. Uh, there we go, delete all that. Control Shift I, select a test file. Okay, and then ignore warnings. Hmm. No. Yes. So now if I zoom out, I should have all the files here. I do. I have 2054, 2114, 2134, and 2154. Now, something doesn't seem right here. Okay, so that's 14 minutes. Why is this? Why is this so short? It's wrong. It's definitely wrong. Like, this should be a 20, 20 minutes of video, and this should be 20 minutes of video. This part's right. That's good. Although this is not where I would want to actually do the cut. Um, so we have that, right? Why is this so short? Right, well, I mean, it's conceivable that this length is right. Like we skipped, you know, seven minutes or whatever. But then this file here, we should have the full 20 minutes. Instead, we have eight and a half minutes for some reason. That's odd. It's very odd. Let's go over here. Okay, so video one, transition, clip. So we'll just ignore the first clip. It may be right. So here we go. So the second one for 21.14.55, right? 21.14.55. So we're only taking 30,600 frames from the video, but it has 72,000. So this is wrong. So I fixed one thing and I broke, broke another. <laughs> So maybe media end is right. I'm gonna say, here, hold on, let's, let's check something really quick, right? So I think this right here is correct. 
Oh, look. So the source in, source out. Eight minutes and thirty seconds. Right. So, like, this is this is the right place, right? Because this is like the end of the stream. So I probably muted myself right here, and so the silence detection. This is where the silence detection detected silence, and so that's where the cut was uh, automatically generated. So this is probably right. Is there anything in this media file before this? No, that's the beginning. Okay, so this is right. And what we've done is we've taken this duration and applied it to all the other files, which is wrong. It's definitely wrong. So why? So find media clip cursors must interact with that value. I see. Okay, for some reason we use end duration. Why? Ah, okay. So this is why it was affecting all of the clips except for the first one, right? So because the first one is by itself and then this was pulling the end duration and applying it to all the intermediate um, uh, clips. Why are we getting it from end though? Can't we read it from clips? Can we do that? Why haven't we been doing that? How did, what, what test does that break? There we go. All right, so this test says that duration should actually be 200 and not 50. Is that true? Okay, so find media clip cursor start from 50. Find media clip cursor end from 350. So we're so this test this test case here is imagining we have like three video files. The first one is 100 seconds long. The second one is 200 seconds long, and the third one is 100 seconds long. And why does this sound like I'm setting up one of those? A train leaves from Albuquerque yet. Anyway, <laughs> there's three three video files is what this is re representing, right? And then we're saying we want to cut from the middle of this uh, to the middle of this. How long is it? Well, it's not 50. That's definitely wrong. Um, or is it? Find media clip cursors to match objects. That's that's interesting. Why would there only be one here? So clip index one. Oh right, right, right. So find media clip cursors finds the the parts in between, the start and the end, right? So it already assumes that we'll have that fifty second first clip and the um, fifty second second clip. That's the start and the end. And so what is the duration? of the parts in between. So the the difference between here is 300, right? But we'll have the 50 from the start and 50 from the end. So that takes off 100. So that should leave 200 seconds, which is the part from this, this file. So that's why that should be 200. Now, that means our tests have been wrong this whole time. But hey, it's been broken this whole time, so that, that makes sense. Okay, so uh, back in the resolve, we'll shift delete, backspace rather, to delete, and then go back to cloning telegram and force a reload, and try this again, export. Test 17, save, yes. Uh, I think I was saying before, one, one downside I feel about how this works in the front end, it's really nice, right? Because we can we'll do things like manually edit this without even saving it and export it. Uh, although that could be bad too. Um, but it's challenging if I wanted to say, take a bunch of episodes 
and then dump out a bunch of OTIO files. I guess I could have it like prompt. <laughs> I, I could have it just open a bunch of like file saves one after the other. That is an option. Or like generate a zip file uh, in the front end. Something like that. All right, so let's import. Okay, so hopefully this all just works now. Except for the parts that don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I zoom out, okay. That looks reasonable. So we, we have uh, 1438 to 34. Yeah, that's right. So here we go. So we have a one hour episode. Like so. Um, and there's still, there's still stuff that I have to manually do here. Like I have to add in the things again. I probably want to trim this to trim off like uh, <laughs> my getting settled back in. Probably trim off the end maybe a little bit. Uh, which of course I've already done this because I already did this episode, but uh, those are the things that I would typically in like the, the music sound level adjustments and stuff at the end and all that. So at some point I'll figure out how to uh, uh, automate that as well. But, uh, and then, you know, after doing all that, then I would go over here and I would render out and then uh, wait for all my video files to render out. Don't need to save that. And then I go back in here and I can select the, uh, the rendered file and uh, then on the episodes view I can like select the episode and I can click upload to YouTube and it does it which is great I'm finally getting back to uh, putting videos up so probably in you know I don't know at some point this will be in YouTube too okay so done with all this and I think we fixed the issues uh, and then in out points in the timeline I don't know. we'll see let's see if that becomes a thing I care about more in the future uh, let's see what does copilot say <laughs> I just did up to video names and durations yeah that's kind of true I'll push that up reset here uh, let's see how do I window shift left arrow nope I tried at some point I'll I'll get used to uh, all the controls that I all the keyboard shortcuts that I used to know with this this keyboard uh, okay so we have a pull request <laughs> ready for review although I have no reviewers so we'll just auto squash it of course the the, the issue was that the um, the in transition and like the outro video weren't being positioned in the end of the timeline but we also fixed other things along with that uh, oh something something failed. Uh, all right, all right, so our snapshot tests are wrong now. Okay, can I see, I can't see the front end test from here, huh? Ah, there we go. Update snapshot. There we go. All right. Update snapshot. Cool. So now this is what's changed in the snapshot. I changed the name of the 
the track to be overlay and start buffer. And then that's us. What happens here? based on converted episode and stream data. Okay, this is... Oh, this changed too. Okay, but this is the important file. This is like an actual file imported and exported in DaVinci Resolve. And okay, and the gap changed because that was intentional. Uh, so I don't know what's up with the other snapshot, but I care less about that than I do about the actual full OTIO file that we're uh, snapshotting here. done more than one thing I went through uh, I saw that you could archive all so I did that a while ago is there a view where we can see the archived items is there not a um Sai. Welcome in. Good morning. Oh, there we go. Archived items. 27 archives. So this, this is all the stuff that I've done. <laughs> Checked off the list. Um, for a while, it was looking like the to-do was actually smaller than the done pile, which is, uh, you know, a neat... <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it feels like, you know, there has been more done than there is to do. And so of course I had to like empty the done pile. And I've added some more to do's. So uh, what's next to do for glowing telegram? There's a lot, a lot of things I would like to do. A lot of things I don't know how to do yet. Um, there's a lot of UI stuff that I wanna do that will, I'm hoping will make things nicer for me. Um, is there, is there, I, I'm, I want to see, I'm going to look through this list and see if I can see anything that would be like more backend work to do. I go back working on the Twitch bot, but it's kind of, um, less important to me right now than other things. Ability to update data and dialogue. Some more UI stuff, really. Probably other met metadata for creating YouTube videos. Uh, this could be good. Um, so we can at least add language information and recording dates and potentially have the ability to attach the video to a playlist when it's uploaded. That saves me a few clicks, right? So 
because otherwise I have to go in and I have to select the playlist. Uh, the issue is going to be with doing that is that I don't have, oh, maybe that's a thing to work on then. So, right, we have these different kinds of records. We have video clips, we have streams, we have episodes, we have topics, and we have this Twitch import thing, which is not a record. It's just like pulling stream data from Twitch, like the stream that is currently going. <laughs> um, but one of the things I want to do is have kind of a higher level thing. Um, right, so like a, 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 a video series. A video series. And I think this would be, like all this stuff right now really ties into the stream record, right? An episode is tied to a stream. Uh, I guess it doesn't technically have to be. Like you can create an episode and not tie it to a stream. Um, but all the episodes I'm doing right now were just like cut from stream recordings. Uh, and then the video clips are representing the individual video files, usually from a stream, but they don't have to be. Um, but this will be something where it will be explicitly how to group episodes together across potentially multiple streams or even like I might do um, like an intro video or um, something else that wasn't streams, you know, this, this hypothetical, hypothetical situation. Uh, <laughs> and then I would uh, have that tied to this, the series record. Now, did I have something on my to-do list for this? I think I did. Um, there we go. Video series of episodes, the ability to have schedule for videos to build, that, that would be another thing. But so how I got to this thought was having a playlist on YouTube. Um, probably what I would do is I would have like the ID of the playlist in this record. And so then when I'm uploading the video from an episode to YouTube, it can look at the series the episode is associated to to figure out which playlist rather than having to manually select that. Uh, yeah, there you go. Ability to link series record to YouTube playlist. I, yeah, the, there you go. Manage YouTube video scheduling for series with a calendar and ca calendar uh, and and scheduling rules. Uh, there we go. So all, all of these things. Um, okay, and this this will be some back end work. So let's uh, let's switch back to main. We should have changes here now. There we go. Um, and then in CRUD API, that's where we're managing all the database migrations. Add series and order. Okay, so we already have a series uh, table somewhere. You know, this might be time to pull up uh, PG Admin and look at what's in the database. Uh, also, I could look at the schema in Diesel, which is how I'm, you know, uh, interacting from Rust with the database. So we have a series table here. No need to go into PG Admin. There we go. Series table. It has uh, a title and description. Uh, a thumbnail potentially for the series, although it's optional. Uh, when it was created and when it was updated. Okay, so we can have, we have a series. And then episodes potentially are tied to the series. So what we don't have right now is a way to like create, update, list, uh, I guess even delete series. Um, so we should do that. <laughs> we should do those things. Uh, so what's the easiest way to like make that happen? So let's see, get list. So potentially what I could do is I could just like take the video clip folder and then basically copy paste it, replace every instance of video, video clip with, uh, um, series. Yeah, there we go. Hey Jake, good morning. 
Thanks for the lurk. Oh. Yeah, so, um... At some point, I have tried this before. So like if we look at get list, right? I'm using this macro that I made to kind of like save on copying and pasting the same code multiple places. Although quite soon after I had set this up and started using it, I started seeing that like in the stream list that it was just not practical to do that. Um, there's a lot of customization. I've not figured out how to like extract this back out um, there are I'm sure there's a way to make something where we can reuse code to like define these views because the API's for them are all basically the same in terms of get a record update a record delete a record list records filter sort all of those sorts of things but the names of the fields are different for the different columns and the table. There might be some additional logic or how we want to like do things. Um, you know, maybe at the end of this, I end up with a way to build an Axum API, uh, you know, some kind of DDL, um, not DDL, uh, DSL, domain specific language in Rust, it's still Rust, but just, you know, some macros and stuff to be able to define these APIs. Um, so that, that might shake out, but for now, the easiest thing to do. Uh, and I think this doesn't feel great, but until I know like all the different permutations of what I want, it's probably premature to try to build some complicated you know, DSL, some library, something that it abstracts all of this, that's gonna take a lot of time. And I don't know that it's gonna pan out and it's gonna be helpful. Uh, whereas I do know if I just paste a copy of this folder and I rename it to, um, what are we doing, series? This, this will work. This will work immediately. Um, I don't think I need a create bulk though, so I'll delete that. Uh, nope, I'm in the wrong folder. Series? Okay, good. Yeah, video clip didn't have a create bulk. Uh, so I do want create, I want delete, I want get list, I want get one, and I want update. And uh, what I want to do is I want to do a find and replace, but only inside of crud. API, SRC, handlers. Uh, series. All right, so every, everywhere that I'm referring to a video clip like this, I want to instead refer to um, series. There we go. And then everywhere that I'm using uh, uh, snake case video clip. I want to refer to series. There we go. And so we should still see that's only confined to the stuff in the series folder. And um, then the there's there's actually a bunch to do. But in terms of making this all work, the the other thing I need to do is I need to go into main.rs and add um, the route. Okay, so yeah, records, series, handler series, get list, forget, post is create. We don't have a create bulk. Um, we should have basically the same things we have for video clips. So we have uh, these things. We have a put and a delete. And 
and then we have to say in um, somewhere. There we go. Handlers. So inside of handlers, mod.rs, we need to say pub mod series. It doesn't like that. S E R I E S mod.rs checks out okay so now we uh, we start getting errors about like things that are wrong series is so that's wrong we get some pluralization issues okay now have you are you happy with that? Nope, because we were referring to fields that don't exist in the series table, right? So we, we actually get um, a type error uh, surfaced that we're, we're trying to use fields that don't exist. Uh, so what are the fields? Let's see, can we, can we just look at series? There we go. ID, title, description, thumbnail, URL created at Okay, so for create, we probably also want to accept the thumbnail URL. Thumbnail URL. URL. Okay, and then the rest of the stuff we throw away. Those aren't things that we're doing here. And then body.thumbnail URL doesn't exist because body is coming from this create series request. Uh, so here's our struct.rs structs .rs for series. And so this needs to, you know, match what we're actually doing here. So thumbnail URL is an optional string. Uh, update series request um, is really just going to be the same thing. Uh, series detail view. It's going to be a uh, pub thumbnail. URL, uh, and then shouldn't we have like oh we got we got a uh, I broke something with one of those find and replace find and replaces like series simple view is SS so when I did series S <laughs> find and replace I think that that got uh, pulled in. Yeah, it's uh, out of date. Um, we really should have created that and updated that in the detail view as well. Kind of weird to not. And then series simple view again. Let's see. So when you mess up something with find and replace, just use more find and replace. Here we go. Uh, series simple view. We're not including with them, so just these four things. And then detail view, this is all wrong. Well, it's mostly wrong. There we go. Uh, there's no stream ID. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, so it's happy with all of this. So we've kind of just redefined kind of like these, these input output uh, payload shapes for our APIs. And then all this stuff goes away that we don't need uh, here. And that means we don't need this imported either. All right, so now update RS is wrong. So update series change set. Probably this should also be in structs. Now this means that we're <laughs> We are now different. We're doing things differently than other places, but uh, that's fine. We want to be able to update the title, the description, and the thumbnail URL. There we go. Uh, and this is going to be yeah, import change set from diesel. Table name series. Okay, 
So that that's fine now. I think it makes more sense to have like all of these different structs that are de defining like how we're interacting with it. Well, this one is different than these other ones, right? These are all talking about like input and output, like deserializing and serializing. And this one is kind of an internal thing. I'm not, I'm gonna go back. I don't think I want this, this here. One, one of these is not like the others. So put this back. Uh, yeah, and then update this. Uh, pub thumbnail URL. There we go. Uh, and then, yeah, we don't, we're not doing anything with stream ID or start time or duration, so all those go away. And then this gets updated to pull in thumbnail URL. And then everything else kind of just works. There's a lot of uh, lifting being done by these implementations of uh, from for series, right? So this basically tells us how to take the series record from the database and transform it into these structs, the simple view and the detail view. So like get list and get one, leverage that to be able to serialize the, the responses. So otherwise this, this code looks basically the same. So there weren't any changes necessary there. And that means that, yeah, there, I just created a whole set of API endpoints. Now, granted, that's a lot of copy and paste and maybe we'll bear out that that is going to be unnecessary. Like if we can find the right macros to define to uh, build out common things for our API endpoints, or maybe like Axum extractors and other like layering stuff, maybe we can do that. And like a lot of the semantics that we need to follow kind of the maybe semantics is not the right word, but the kind of the interface details that we need to define for react admin uh, and kind of how it's expect like how the front end is expecting to, to interact with the back end. If we can extract that out, then that's less copy paste. But for now, uh, what I can do is we can um, run compose up. That's going to rebuild our, our containers locally. Uh, and then the next thing to do is back to the front end. We got a little bit of uh, rust <laughs> in there, but back to the front end, uh, I need to define the, uh, the resource and the views for uh, a series. Let's see, so are the views here for video clip pretty general? Do I not have a common create view yet? No, just add it. Okay. And list. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go over to series. I'm going to paste. There we go. And then, uh, oh, that's fun. The video clips one still, the, the name is stream create. Um, while I'm here, is this important? No, it's just going to be less confusing. You know, if you're not paying attention to which file you're in and you see, oh, it's stream create, you're going to be, you're going to be misled. Uh, create. To do add those other ones okay so back to series it's the same thing here yep just create a video series that's all did i have a custom uh title input or was it just yeah it is title input okay Also add, might as well add the description here as well. We 
text input anymore. All right, so that's create, and then we'll do list. Uh, and then we'll do, yeah, except this is gonna be, do I have a title field? I really should, but no, not yet. So this will at least allow me to have uh, front end elements to like look at the list of series and then create a new series. Uh, we can add edit too, right? That, that's not um, it's not exactly difficult. There's more copy paste. Uh, it helps if I copy the right thing though. Copy, paste, rename, edit. Series edit. I'll use edit props. Uh, get rid of the title. Um, rather than importing, I actually have a custom edit wrapper. How am I exporting that from, from here? There we go. So we're exporting default, the edit, and then we're including edit props as an additional. Okay, edit, comma, edit props from there. There we go. And then input title input, description input, uh, and then we have a uh, text field for the thumbnail URL. all the build stuff is happening. Uh, so let's take a quick break. 